Welcome back to the Fuller Fanatic channel. Today, I'm going to share a collab by Protec. In addition, I'll share what I believe to be a little hidden secret many owners of this model may not know about. First, I'm going to quickly run down the build specs, then cover the hidden egg. So if you're familiar with the highly sought after 2403 OP or SNG operator collab by Protec and Strider, go ahead and skip this part. With a handle length of four and three quarters of an inch and a handle thickness of a half an inch, the oddly shaped handles ergos are out of this world. The flat top side prevents back and forth rolling across the palm in hard use and the choiled areas make finger placement easy. With perfect jimping placement and a wider rear, gaining and keeping a good purchase on the knife happens organically. Constructed from a light but rigid 7075 aluminum, the black coated handle feels satiny smooth to the touch. Protec even went the extra mile, keeping close to the original design down to the hand pressed titanium pocket clip that is anchored by another clip. Running a button lock system, the operator is sporting the only button issued for this series. One containing a sealed enclosure with a green tritium tube as its contents. The blade comes in at 3.5 inches, with a cutting edge of 2 and 875 thousandths of an inch. Super slicey at 120 thousandths of an inch in blade thickness, and it also differs from its original in the lack of any opening hole, which obviously, being an auto, there's no need. And by starting out with a thinner stock, the blade doesn't drop as much in achieving its behind the edge measurements. Comprised of 154 cm with a drop point style flat ground, black DLC finished blade, and the operator's blade is entirely sterile, not one marking. As to the Protec action, the kick is definitely the weakest deploy from Protec that I have felt. The TR5 was my first Protec, and it hit, and this smaller godson hits twice as hard right out of the box. And it's not just this SNG in particular. I've had a few. This is my third. This being the first that's going to stay in my collection, but all were consistently the same. From the open position, if you hold the blade upright and push the lock button, then swing your wrist, one can almost swing the blade two thirds of the way back down. And the only two reasons I could think of for Protect to tune the SNG so soft is A, they didn't want one handed closing to feel like you're fighting the blade or difficult, and or B, they wanted the coating to last longer between the external stock and the frame's contact points, which as you can see has taken some marking, but this was only after I set the spring on high rate. And yep, this is something that can be done on the SNGs by Protect. After noticing the soft deploy, I went to open up the build to see if swapping the springs would rectify the issue. Then I stumbled across the second spring tab retainer hole, and this, when used in conjunction with the factory spring, will exude a much higher degree of force from the extra coiled energy. Long story short, this SNG, currently using the second slot, hits just as hard as a Microtech stitch. I promise it hits so hard, if I limp wrist it, you can actually see the handle butt rotating outwards from the recoil. If I limp wrist it in the same manner, it slaps to the point it kind of hurts. Like hitting a baseball with an aluminum bat, which doesn't hurt, but more of a pulsating tingle. And although the resistance on the closing is more apparent, it's not bad or difficult at all. And the trade-off and substantially more kicking power in addition to the new closing and lockup audible is worth every bit of added resistance. And just as before, I can still pull off the one-handed closing with ease. And doing this to your SNG will probably, for seriously, more than likely, but definitely, void your warranty. So proceed with care and caution. And not to scare or deter anyone, but if you're unfamiliar with a button locking system's anatomy, the SNG isn't where you should start. So become familiar with blade to button tension, as well as the spring's orientation underneath the button. It's not really rocket science, and usually it's spring, then button, then blade with spring to capture the button. But in this case, to get the tab onto the correct side for placement, I had to cant and angle the spring and button, and blade with spring simultaneously. Then with a tool or a small flathead, push the spring's arm into the mill channel. Then proceed to push down the button and spring, followed by the blade and spring. And now at this point, you can rotate the blade to any point in between, closed or open, and the blade will capture the button, thus freeing up the hand to finish reassembly with the show side scale. And remember to recenter your blade, but don't over tighten your pivot, which will result in a sluggish action or a failure to deploy at all. And after recentering the blade and tightening the body screws, let her rip and see the results for yourself if you don't believe me. Give it a couple more deploys and recheck for blade centering, and then you're good to go. And comment down below if this made a complete world of difference in the deployment power. 
Also drop a comment if you already knew about and did this tune on your SNG Auto. And with that, I'll be signing off from the Fuller Fanatic.